This lesson is on calculating square roots by hand. This method is a way to calculate square roots without using a calculator. Your parents may not have heard about it or have seen it, but your grandparents probably have. Even though this is not part of the required curriculum, as you will soon see, this method requires good estimating and organizational skills and is offered here as a source of enrichment. Let's start by using this method to calculate the square root of a perfect square, one that we know the answer to. First, we rewrite the radicand into pairs of digits and set it up to look like long division. The answer, which we'll refer to as the square root quotient, is on top of the radical and will remain in this position throughout the question. To the left of the radical is the square root divisor, and this will change its position throughout the question. We need to find a value to go into the box. It must be the same number, and in this case, we need to find something times itself that is less than or equal to three. One works perfectly. Now we do our long division. So one times one equals one. Next, we will subtract and get two. Then we bring down the next pair of digits. So we wanna find a number that will divide into 224 in this case. This is where it gets a little different. The next step, we double the square root quotient, and this becomes the leading digit in our new square root divisor. The box represents the ones digit in the new square root divisor. So in this case, we are looking for 20 something times something, which would give us a value as close to but not bigger than 224. This is where your estimating skills come into play. It may take you more than one try to find the number that goes in the box. In this example, eight works perfectly because eight times 28 is 224. And when we subtract, we get a remainder of zero. So 18, is the square root of 324. Do you remember how to check this answer? In our second example, we'll use this method to calculate the square root of a non-perfect square. We will find a three decimal approximation for the square root of five. First, we will need to set our radicand up to have pairs of digits. In this case, we need to have three pairs of zeros after the decimal. Each pair of zeros in the square root sign will represent one digit in our answer. Here we go. So what number would go in the box? What times itself would be as close as possible to five, but not bigger than five? In this case, two works. Now let's go through our long division. 2 times 2 is 4. We subtract and get 1, and we bring down our first pair of zeros. We double the square root quotient, so this becomes the leading digit in our new square root divisor. We are looking for a number in the box so that 40-something times something will give us a value less than or equal to 100. In this case, two works again. And now we'll go through our long division over, all over again. So two times 42 is 84. We subtract and get 16 and bring down the next pair of zeros. We double our square root quotient. In this case, we double both of the digits, two and two, and come up with four, four. And now the box represents the units digit again. So we have 440 something times something needs to be less than or equal to 1600. And again, we want to find the closest value without going over. 
In this case, the number in the box is three. And we start the process all over again. Three times 443 is 1,329. We subtract, get a remainder of 271, bring down our final pair of zeros, double the square root quotient. So again, we double each digit. So we have four, four, six. And finally, the box represents the units digit. So we have 4,460 something times something that must be less than or equal to 27,100. Could you imagine doing this for every question without a calculator? See if you can find the final digit to our answer here. Our final digit is 6. So the three-digit approximation for the square root of 5 is 2.236. Check this answer with a calculator. Also, try this method on some of your other estimation questions and see how well you do. For further enrichment, see if you can find out why this method works. Also, try and find other methods for calculating or estimating square roots.